This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Krajinska Pola. Thank you, Google Translate. But before that, this video is brought to you by Viking Hammer 73 and Alpha Trion. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Kryinske Pola map you found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the one point of release, this map is a PC only map. That is because this is a 4X map. It also has multi-train angle. And while you can see the file size here, the map itself is just over one gigabyte. This map also includes 68 required mods. Quite the list. And when you combine up the map size and the mods, well, you're looking at over two gigabytes of storage needed to load up this map. Now, let me read you the description. A map based on three real towns in Central Europe, which were adapted for the needs of the game. This map is a forest map with five farms, small, medium, and large. One agricultural base, contract yard, 191 fields, 28 meadows from 0.18 hectares to 52.38. Five new crops in green rye, trich cow, rye, clover, and alfalfa. Four sell points. Twelve land items that you can buy that will provide you passive income. One large and small forest. Twenty hope feather rune collectibles. Multi-terrain angle. Varied terrain. Custom traffic. New crop, grass, and ground textures as well as trees. Custom ambient sounds. Stubble compaction when crop destruction is turned on custom license plates for the appropriate region, adaptation for the DLC premium and platinum edition, basically means you can sell those, customized precision farming values. Uh, it's not quite right. So this map is supposed to have a custom soil map, but it doesn't because the soil map is not the right size in the map itself. And when you load the map up, you do get an error. I will show that here in a little bit. We have a volunteer fire department, a mill, lime stations, two gas stations, two straw purchase points, grocery store, oil mill, sawmill, two grain collection centers, root crop purchasing, animal dealer, purchase of stones and boards. We have a wholesale market, wool purchase, bakery, dairy, biogas plant, big bag store, and a vehicle shop. And then, well, you can see the list of required mods here. Like I said, it's 68. Now, let's talk a little bit about the required mods because this map goes well beyond what we have seen with respect to required mods. Why do we have required mods on these map downloads? Well, that is to give these map authors credit for being included into this map. Let's take one here. Let's take Placeable Objects Pack by Alien Jim. Or let's take the Pack of Fences by Peasel, Pie Cell. We'll go with Pie Cell. Okay? A fence pack. Well, maybe, maybe Pie Cell has had 50,000 downloads of his fence pack. Let's just pretend. Okay? And let's pretend that this fence pack is the best fence pack out there and gets used by all types of European map modders. Well, as a result, his fence pack is included in, let's say, 10 different maps. Now, let's say each of those maps gets a million downloads apiece. So his fence pack has now got 10 million downloads because it's been incorporated with 10 different maps that have had a million downloads each. But he still only gets credit for 50,000 downloads because only 50,000 people downloaded his mod. Well, by incorporating his mod as a required mod, now everyone who downloads any 10 of those maps will also have to download his fence pack. If they've already downloaded it, it's fine. If they're not, they'll have to get it. So therefore, in the end, he ends up with 10,050,000 downloads on his fence pack for his effort and for the fact that it was included so heavily in all of those other maps. So that's why we have these required mods. It's to give map authors the credit they, quite frankly, are very well due.
or the map authors, mod authors, both ways. Let's go ahead and load in. So in addition to all of those required mods, we're going to use the mods we typically use when we look at maps. So that is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, straw harvest. And I will tell you, if you load this map up in farm manage mode or start from scratch, the starting farm, well, all five farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in new farmer mode. The only exceptions are you do not own any land, nor do you have any starting machinery. If you happen to load this map up with a lower end system, maybe one with integrated graphics, you will find that your frame rates are going to suffer depending on which way you are looking. I saw anything from a solid 60 FPS, depending on where I was looking, down to low 50s. So just be aware that the way this map is set up, you may have some frame drops if you are playing on a lower end system. This map will also take quite a long time to load in because there's a ton, an absolute ton of things that the game has to render out and pull out of all of those various mods as we are seeing right here. Now we're loading in the vehicles that are scattered around the map. There's a ton of vehicles also. Now the way the map author has done it and the way you can see here on the PDA, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Well, you're gonna see vehicle icons literally everywhere. And it makes you think, oh my gosh, I've got a ton of starting machinery literally scattered all over the map. No, no, you don't. You don't have any of this machinery. None of this is usable. The only thing that's usable is right here at this farm. Every other piece of this machinery is not usable by you. Now, I suppose if you as a PC player went into the vehicles.xml, found all of the farm ID 17 entries and change them to farm ID one entries, and then save that out either in your save game or in the map itself. Next time you loaded up your save game or started a new save, well, quite frankly, you may own all of these machineries, but not the way the map is delivered. We do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22, as well as the new crops of alfalfa, clover, rye, triticale, and green rye. If you do happen to have the premium expansion loaded, loaded, you'll have red beets, carrots, and parsnips as well. Take a look at our farmland screen. You'll see we start by owning farmland ID 228. That is the main starting farm. In addition, we have a small farmland of 119 and 157 owned at the start. In addition to that main starting farm, we have then a second farm located at farmland ID 227. That is going to be viable for $464,784. In addition to that, we also have a farm at Farmland ID 230. That can be bought for $679,584. Farmland ID 231 for $257,040. Farmland ID 240, which is going to be the contractor yard, for $175,062. And then farmland ID 242, which is viable for $205,260. Now, do you believe I forgot to mention that farmland ID 228, which is your starting farm, can be bought in any alternate game mode for $108,000. Here, I notice we have quite the variety field sizes and farmland sizes here. Also on the map, let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of those viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are. If those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much is this farmland going to cost us? You can see quite a variety in farmland prices here. For example, I've seen farmland ID 86 at $1.1 million. I saw another piece of farmland that was over a million dollars. Farmland ID 109. 57.69, that is going to be field 109, is going to be $3.4 million. Then we've got some fairly cheap farmland also, farmland ID 1 or 127 is going to be one hectare at $60,000. 
So quite the variety in farmlands and field sizes. Fields for all types. Let's going to take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And as we've learned from the description, we've got varied field sizes from less than one hectare all the way up to over 50. And I would suspect that our largest field is going to be located here at farmland ID. I guess we've already missed it. We've already missed it. We do have a custom crop counter also available to us here on this map. And we can see that crop counter with our new crops of alfalfa, clover, rye, triticale, and green rye. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our basin crops as available to us in FS22, as well as our eggs, wool, and milk. With respect to our silage, hay, straw, and grass, yes, we do have the ability to sell multiple places there. And with respect to our base game productions, yes, once again, we can indeed sell all of the base game productions catered to us within this map. We do have the ability to buy bulk lime as well as get rid of our stones. With respect to our new crops, rye, triticale, clover, dry clover, alfalfa, and dry alfalfa, we do have multiple sell points for those. We do not have sell points for our farm production pack, but we do have the ability to sell our premium expansion in our platinum expansion productions. As we can see here, we also have our ability to sell our separated manure. And those playing with straw harvest, we do have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets. We start out with a very small list of starting machinery, but we only start out with two minuscule size fields. Everything is owned and none of it is leased with well-maintained machinery. We also start out with cow shed, chicken coop, second chicken coop, and a modern cow barn. Now, these are scattered around various farms. Even though we only own one farm at the start, we do technically have access to some of these other animal areas. This map does have contracts available. We do have two small greenhouses that we own at the start, but they are also not at our starting farm. They are at a different farm, which we will see when we get around to the farm tour. And we also have 20 Holt Belaroon collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Fent Fabret 511C small tractor. We have the Rottle Smash. We have the Nova 330 Harvester, as well as the Power Stream 500 header. We have the Welgar DK 115 trailer. We have the Rave EG39 cultivator. Nordstein HK25 NS 3030 Cedar and Power Hero combination. Minardi N20T header trailer, as well as the FGB 600 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements, but we do have one in the Skentia Streamline Semi that is included as a required mod, as well as the tap and portable jet washer. Let's quickly tab over to our starting farm. See, so we're up here by field 122 and 131. Located right here. So we have our harvester, our harvester header, and some of our machinery. Everything at all of these farms can be customized and sold. We have our silo fill pipe and our dump point. For our cows, we have our milk trigger located right here. We have our manure heap around the back. This particular barn is going to be able to hold 24 cows. Here we have our slurry fill point. We have our straw dump point located right there. And then I suspect our food trough is also gonna be over here as well.
nice small shed here, which we have our trailer. We have a silage bunker right here between these two buildings. We have our sleep trigger. And then we just have some more general storage. Now, when I said everything can be sold here, everything can indeed be sold here. But there's one little caveat. Everything is sold individually. So you're going to be selling all of these little pieces all by your own some. But they can actually be sold, which is a really great thing. In addition, we can sell the fences and the gates. Now making our way around the map to our second farm. We started right here with our first farm. Now we're here at our second farm, right beside fields 136 and 135. Some of these items we can make use of without owning the land, but I did go ahead and buy the land. So we have our sleep trigger. We have our wardrobe trigger. We have some implement storage. Again, everything can be sold at this farm as well. Now around the back, we do have a silage bunker here beside this shed. We have a manure heap here in behind the cow area. We have our slurry point. We have our food trough. We have our cow delivery point. This building will hold 100 cattle. And then on this side of the building, we're going to find our milk trigger we're located right here. Now, while we do have an extreme number of required mods, these are very nice structures indeed. We have our silo, so we're dump and fill point. We do have a trigger here beside the silo in order to cover and uncover the dump point. Beside the house, we have a water spigot. And that is the second farm. Farm three is located further south. So here we had farm two. We're gonna now make our way south to farm three, which is just south of field 100. We have our farmhouse on the right. We have a nice storage shed here on our left. So with respect to the farmhouse, we do have our sleep trigger here at the front door. And another large storage shed for our machinery. This is going to be one of our larger farms that are pre-placed on the map. Again, you can sell everything here at this farm. And we have our slurry point for our cows. We can hold 150 cows in this building. We have our food trough and our straw trigger. We have our milk point as well as our manure heap. We have our farm silo, another one of these farm silos where we can cover and uncover the dump point. Nice long shed here for implement or bale storage. Then we have a chicken coop. So we have our dump point for our food. We have our chicken buy point where we're going to be able to put 1,500 chickens in this building. And then our eggs are going to spawn inside. On the back, we have our large three-sided silage bunker. 
another nice shed back here for implement storage. And that, folks, is going to be your third farm. Now, right down the street from the third farm, we have our fourth farm. So let's just go ahead and make our way down here to the fourth farm. That is going to be right here. South of field 100 and 102. So out here we have a root prop storage. So we have our dump point and our fill point for our cellar. Another nice vehicle shed. This is going to be our chicken coop. So we have our food here. We have our chicken delivery point. For a total of 50 chickens. Now, I would love your all's information as to where the eggs might possibly spawn here on this coop. I thought maybe they spawned in here, but there's no markers. Maybe they spawn here. There's no markers. I don't really see them spawning inside of here. And there's really no markers here around the back. Now, we do have a, uh, well, a toilet here around the back, but that's nonetheless. Another nice storage shed. And then in the back here, we have our two greenhouses. So remember those two greenhouses that we owned at the start? Well, they're over here at farm four. So we have our pallet spawn point, we have our water point, and our interactive point here inside. And they're going to do tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberries. We also have some bees located over here, but the bee honey spawn point is not located here. It's actually located over at the contractor yard. We have a pull-through silage bunker here on the back. We have our manure heap. We have our slurry point for our cows. We have our food and straw trough. Here we're going to be able to buy our cows. Total of 60 cows here. And we have our milk trigger. We have our farmhouse. And that, folks, that is going to be the fourth farm. There we have our farm silo. So we were located right here with those two farms. Our fifth farm is down the street and then around the corner. Here we have farm five. Then we have our contractor yard, which is located right here. So coming in here to our fifth farm, we have our farmhouse triggers. We're going to have our sleep trigger here at the door, and then our wardrobe trigger right here, oddly enough, between the side of the building and the street. Oh, that's loud. So we got, we got storage. A little ways back from those doors. Do have lights on these buildings. Around the back, we have our silo, our dump and fill point. We also have a drive through stylage bunker. We have our manure heap. We have a pressure washer. So we have our food trough and straw. We have our slurry point. We're going to hold 40 cows in here, a whole 40 cows. And that is pretty much the fifth farm. Now let's just quickly run down the street 
and around the corner to the contractor yard. Which is located right here. So here we have the contractor yard, Farmland ID 240. Inside the contractor yard, we have fuel. We have several large buildings for storing things. Now, the only thing that we can't sell here is this rundown and decrepit building. I was able to sell pretty much anything else that I tried to sell at this area and the other various farms. I said lots of lots of storage for implements machines and then we have our honey spawn point and then we have some more beehives now before we move on to our fly around i do want to circle back to our production chains and our soil map so as i mentioned we do have two small greenhouses here we do own those at the start. I've gone ahead and purchased the other productions on this map. So we have a dairy that's going to produce our butter, cheese, and milk. We have our sawmill for planks and wood chips. We have our bakery for bread and cake. Fairly standard recipes. We have our flour mill. Now the flour mill is also going to output pig food. So that is unique. And then we have our fairly standard oil mill for sunflower, canola, and olive oil. Now, with respect to the precision farming soil map, when we started this map up, I mentioned that the description was a little not quite right. It said that there were customizations made for precision farming. And I mentioned that in the game log, well, there was a warning with respect to the soil map. And I do want to show you that soil map warning right now. It will take a little bit of time for us to scroll through all of the vehicles and the decorative objects that are spawned into the map. But once we get up here to this portion of the log, you will see that basically it's saying that the soil map included with this particular map is not the correct size. So what we're seeing here and why this has thrown me for a little bit of a loop is it's loading a soil map from the save game because I've come back here ultimately to re-record this segment because I was a little bit thrown for a loop. And you're going to see this section of the video before we move on to the next section of the video, which technically was recorded before this segment. So. Just know that things are a little bit out of order at this point. But previously, it was showing basically that the soil map included with the map was the wrong size. And the soil map needs to be 1024 by 1024. I also exposed the soil map, and you're going to see that here in the next segment. And it looks like everything is still lining up. So let's just go ahead and cut to the next segment where we're going to show you the entirety of the map as it is exposed. Now with the soil map error, I don't know if this is deliberate, that the entirety of this map is supposed to be loamy sand, or if it is simply because of the fact that we do have that warning in place. But at any rate, until the map's fixed, if you're playing with precision farming, the entirety of the map is gonna be loamy sand. So isn't that wild? I, I kind of wonder, Right? Is it is it supposed to be like that, or is that just a byproduct of the soil map not quite being the right dimensions when the map loads? Anyway, let's take to the skies. We'll take a look around. This is a very well decorated map. This is a very pretty map. If you're into kind of this Polish style European maps, so we are here at our starting farm. We've come back to this point, and that is what we will use as kind of our launching point. We're going to come over here to the west a little bit from the main farm. And that is where we're going to find one of our grain cell points, I do believe. This is going to be the 
purchase a zab yeah this one so this is going to be a grain buy point and you can see what the map builder has done they've basically taken real game vehicles and implements and have scattered them around as decorative objects now this could possibly impact your frame performance because these are higher resolution textures and models than are typically used for deco vehicles but that is pretty much why we're seeing all of these vehicle icons scattered around the map if you get up close to them they'll say they're owned by you but they're not because technically they are used and owned by farmland id or farm id 17 as opposed to farm id 1. Over here we have some bale sell points. We have a manure buy point, and then we have a bale buy point for purchasing R bales. That is farm two. You will see that we do have utility poles throughout some of these fields. These utility poles do have collisions on them, so you will have to work around those or have your hired helpers work around those. So here we have farm two, which we already took a look at. You see the BGA off in the distance. I did buy the BGA. I did try to sell the BGA and was completely unsuccessful. So everything at the biogas plant is permanently a part of the map. So we have two pull through silage bunkers. Here we're gonna have sell point for slurry a buy point for manure and then we have the bga itself which we're going to have to buy the land in order to make use of it so we have our dump point we're going to find our fill point for our digestate and our dump point for our slurry are also going to be located over here and the interactive icon is going to be at the scale house This is going to be a this is going to be our bakery. So we have our pallet spawn point, we have our dump point, and we have our interactive icon here inside with some products on display. Make our way over here. This is going to be the dairy. So we have our interactive icon. We have our milk dump point. And our pallet spawn point here at the loading dock. And we'll make our way south. As we make our way south, we can kind of look at our farmland here. The map is fairly flat. And you shouldn't have too much difficulty in merging fields together. Other than having to clear out a few trees here and there. Now, with respect to our scoring system, we are going to be giving the map a full point with respect to production built in or areas set aside for such because we have eight different productions pre-placed on this map. We're also going to be giving the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all our rebasing crops, animal outputs, and production points. Now, this is where we spawned here at the start, right there at the bus stop. We have a volunteer fire department located right here. So those playing with the emergency pack can make use of this after they buy the land. Here we have our oil production. So we have our pallet spawn point. We have our output for our pig food, interactive icon, and our dump point. Over here is where we're gonna be able to buy bulk lime. I do feel that I may have missed a few spots here. So we have our bakery, manure, liquid cell. So that's our BGA. We have our milk area. We have a gas station. 
big bag shop. That's what we missed. And then our construction site. So let's circle back here to our gas station. So we're way further south than I thought we were. Okay. Here we have our gas station. And then we have a big bags site here in behind it. Ah, here we go. This is going to be to buy seed and fertilizer. Make your way back down here real quick. Do our lime buying station. And along this road is where we're going to have farms three and four. So they're going to be coming up here on our right. With respect to the farms being customizable, we are going to be giving the map a full point there as well. Because everything that I tried to sell at all of these farms, I was completely successful in doing so. So there's farm three. There's farm four. Over here, I was getting all excited because I thought we had some forestry machinery. But these are, again, they're just set up as kind of decorative objects. And we'll make our way over here to kind of the town area up along the western side of the map. Now, with respect to buildings where probably are using the new texturing technique as well as ground textures, I think I'm going to give the map three quarters of a point here. It's getting pretty difficult to pick out buildings that are using and are not using the new texturing. I think we do have, though, a combination of buildings here that are and are not. So therefore, we are just going to take a quarter point off. With respect to ground textures, we do have quite an assortment of ground textures. So I do want to show you those here in a moment. So in our ground textures, we have several lattice work and stamped concrete brick work. Assortment of various dirts, gravel and sand we have fairly standard plants and then fairly standard trees now we made our way over to here river oil mill and directly behind us we have our vehicle shop we have a zitor vehicle shop here on the side, we have our maintenance trigger. And those markers are correct. And then we have our actual dealer trigger inside. Let's go ahead and Lisa Mahindra. So we'll see where our vehicles spawn. And they spawn right here in the parking lot. Fairly large area for our vehicles to spawn at. We're only going to be limited really to the size of the vehicles to get out of side the gate. We have another fuel point. Over here we have a grocery sell point. Here we have our oil mill, so we have an interactive icon. We have our dump point. And we have our pallet spawn point. So 
So we have our grocery that we already talked about. We're going to come up here to our sawmill next. That is going to be located right here. So we have our dump point, we have our fill point for our wood chips, we have our interactive icon, we have our pallet spawn point for our planks. And over here we have a wood chip cell point. Continue to make our way up the street. Here we're going to have cell points for potatoes, sugar meats, root crops, and grain. This is going to be farm five. Remember, we have our contractor yard then located right here around the corner of farm five. We have our animal dealer located right here. Oh, so sad. We have static. Animals. We do have sounds though. We have another bale cell point. And that is just about going to do it for us. We are up here now, just here beside field 23. And that is not viable, but really does look like it could be a really nice farm option. Already set up with starting machinery, ready to rock and roll because all of this is legit machinery. So again, I would love to know down in the comments below, if you load this map up, or if you open this map up, open up the vehicles XML or take your vehicles XML in your save game with the save with the game closed and then find farm ID 17 and change 17 to one and then save that file, boot up your save game or start a new save game. I would be really interested to see if suddenly you have now Ownership of all of this extra stuff that is on the map. That would be pretty cool. That would be a great way to get started. That's for sure. Now, with respect to our final scoring metric of interactive areas and player triggers being clearly marked, I'm going to take a quarter point off there because we did have some issues identifying where the eggs are going to spawn at that one farm. So again, we're going to take a quarter point off there. So that's going to leave this map up with a score of four and a half out of five. Very respectable score. This is a 4X map. Uh, it does have quite a lot of options and might be an interesting map for some industrial players to maybe put it onto a multiplayer server. Would like to know your all thoughts down in the comments below. And until next time, happy farming. So here's that construction site that we didn't get to earlier. This is going to be a wool cell and a wool kind of a wool cell point is here to the left. This is going to be a warehouse cell point to the right. Then that is our bakery that we already talked about.